gadgets and gizmos galore. Today we're talking about family travel tech. Welcome to Vacation Mavens, a family travel podcast with ideas for your next vacation and tips to get you out the door. Here are your hosts, Kim from Stuffed Suitcase and Tamara from We Three Travel. So Kim, we're both back from our road trips and I I don't know why I'm cheering that. I kind of want to be back on it. No, I'm just kidding. Sorry. (laughs) Don't tell your husband that. You're just know, hearing yeah. that you're home. But I'm wondering, like, you know, we were, we were going a long time. You were going a long time. Did you find any, like, tech or apps or things that you found really useful on this trip? Yes. I actually have some good things to mention, and so this is perfect timing. I think I'll start with the app thing because there was two apps that I used tons. And the first one was called Road Trippers. And we've talked, I think we've talked about Road Trippers in the past. And I know you and I did a giveaway and they gave away like a Road Trippers Plus membership, which I think is pretty affordable. It's, I want to say $24 a year, if that sounds right. I don't know if that sounds right to you. And I, so they actually gave me a complimentary one to try out. And so I thought, okay, I'm planning this massive trip. And we went basically from the Oregon coast all the way down the coast of Northern California, and then kind of ducked inland and went down to stay at a friend's guest house for a while. And so I planned the whole trip with this Road Trippers Plus and I absolutely loved it. It was cool. So the good point is definitely, I think using the app is better. At first I started just using it on my desktop, like on through a web browser. And once I installed the app, using it on your phone is way easier, but it just helps you, you know, map your route and find little they kind of like roadside attractions, but there's some really cool stuff on there. And like there was this one part where it was like a scenic byway. And I thought, oh, that's cool. So I added it to my thing. And then I looked on all trails and found like a hike to go with it. So that's the other app I used was on this trip a lot that I recommend is all trails. But yeah, so Road Trippers Plus was just cool because it, it people can also add photos. And so you really get a sense of like, Because one was like the largest totem pole. And I thought, well, that's pretty cool. Like my girls might like that. But then when I looked at the photos, I was like, ah, it seems kind of like a cheesy tourist stop. Yeah. Like you've been to Vancouver. You've seen. Yeah, exactly. Like real. Yeah. Yeah. Like when. So. So we skipped that, you know, so that's the idea is that it has some of those things. But also, you know, I finally decided on this trip, I wanted to do a drive through tree. And so I went and I got to see like what the drive through, there was three of them that are kind of the main ones that I know about. And I looked at the pictures and then also read the reviews and what people said. And it helped me decide that like, okay, we're going to do this one that's in Klamath. And so I I really liked it for that sort of stuff because it is user generated content. So I loved that there's reviews about the spots and, you know, sometimes there's good photos and you really get a feel for it. So that is what I like about all trails, you know, that you can really get a sense of what you're going to see and how hard it is and things. And then, yeah, so it's nice to see it has that kind of community because I haven't done the the plus or pro version, but I did look at it on my desktop when I was planning my trip. But then I ran yeah. out like the free version only has like so many stops, stops you know, or something. something. Yeah. 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 But I did see that like, we were going to drive past the what's it called? The oh, gosh, what's that movie? The baseball movie with Kevin Costner? Oh, Field, Field of, Dreams. of Dreams. Yeah, we were <laughs> going to drive past that site. So I was like, oh, Glenn, like, what else are we going to be in this corner of Iowa to like yeah. drive past that? Would you want to go? But then it turns out they were closed in March. Oh, no. <laughs> That happened to us. We wanted to go to the Martinelli cider tasting that we've done before, actually. And I was like, oh, I'm going to add that on there. But yeah, they were closed. They're not doing it right now. So I was like, oh, bummer. But anyways, yeah. So I I definitely, if you're looking for a new app, I think Road Trippers and paying for the plus, like Tamara said, you get to have as many like stops as you want. And so you can use it if you just want five stops. And so you can get a feel for it and then you can really decide. But using the app, like if you're doing planning on your iPad or your iPhone is the key. So that was one thing. And then like you already said, all trails is huge. And I actually used that. It was so cool because we found we were driving through Oregon and I realized it kind of the timing, it was a nasty, nasty day. And so the day I was going to do this big Oregon dune stop, it was gross. It was so windy and gross. And I said, well, there's no point in us going because we're just going to be cold and miserable. And so then the next day I was looking that night on all trails and trying to find hikes, you know, along this stretch we were going to be doing. And I found a dune, you know, a dune hike. And it was this random, like, I never would have known 
where it was. It was like John P. Dugenham trailhead or something like that. And I wouldn't have known to go there. And sure enough, it was a tiny parking lot, probably 10 cars. And we parked and we might, we hiked maybe quarter of a mile in. And then all of a sudden we came out to this amazing, huge, like massive, felt like the Arabian desert (laughs) sand dunes. So it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah, And if it wouldn't have been for all trails and just kind of looking and like you said, you know, being able to see the photos that people have submitted and really getting a feel like I like all trails because it shows you like the actual route and it gives you the distance. So you can see like, oh, it's a loop. It's an out and back. And it's just, it works really well. And then it has a really cool, like getting there section for most of the trails, not all of them. And it helps you, like I said, it helped me go, okay, right after the city, I need to kind of be looking because there's this campground and it's the turns right after that. Yeah. Yeah. So that yeah. sounds fun. So any other tech or apps that you used? Yeah. So another app, one more app, and then I have one tech thing. So another app that I loved was called Gas Buddy. And I've heard of that before. And I know I used it in the olden days, like when it first came out, but I actually got it again. And I found it really useful on a road trip because I actually ended up using Costco gas stations a lot. And same with Fred Meyer, because we're Costco members. And like at one place, we saved 30 cents per gallon by just driving a mile down the road and going to a Costco instead. And so, you know, I mean, it's not always worth it, but at 30 cents, a gallon it saved us about five or six bucks so it was worth the little one mile down the road type thing but i think gas buddy is just great because you can really see that oh in this city should i fill up now where our hotel is or should we get on the road for an hour and then fill up because i'm i kind of like to keep my gas really full especially when i'm traveling (laughs) on my own (laughs) yeah I'm like, once it gets below a half a tank, I'm like, okay, keep my eyes open. <laughs> you know, where's where's the next gas fill up I'm going to do? So anyways, but yeah, so Gas Putty was good. And then the one piece of tech that I absolutely loved and like full disclosure, these guys sent me this item by Skosh and I got it from CES, which took place virtually in January. It's called the Fresh Air HEPA Air Purifier. It's an air purifier that's like a cylinder, so it almost is like a coffee tumbler type thing, and it actually fits perfectly like in a cup holder in a car. And I was wondering, I'm like, okay, how much use am I going to get on this? But we're going on a road trip, so I said, sure, send it to me. I'll try it out. And it was so useful for these days of like eating in the car because I will admit we ate McDonald's a couple of times, and then one time we actually got like fish in the car, like fish and chips and coleslaw, and we're eating it in the car. And even though you throw the garbage away, your car still kind of stinks. And I turned this thing on after we would eat and it really worked. Like it, it was amazing. Like the next morning, because almost every time for me, I have a really sensitive nose. And so, yeah. So you know how you park in the hotel and like, you don't really notice it because you've been in the the car the whole day, but then you go sleep in the hotel and then you come out the next morning, you open your car and you're like, okay, it smells like fish or McDonald's or whatever. I did not experience that on this trip at all. That's so good. I think this thing really helps. So anyway, yeah, that's my one piece of advice. We <laughs> in the car a ton yes. also because yeah. it was just, you know, safer. And I told Hannah, like, she's going to turn into a chicken nugget because they're going to start like calling her nugget. Well, I think we had more fast food in those two weeks than we've had like the last two years. It was crazy, yeah. but it was just easier. And yeah. honestly, like it felt safer, like some of those kind of things. So yeah, usually I would love to do all the local stuff, but we didn't this time. So I could have used that for sure. Yeah, it's and I mean, it it is I think it's I think it's $99. So it's not cheap, cheap. But if you do spend a lot of time in the car, I was I was impressed with it. I, I felt like it worked. So I'm just thinking also, like, after picking up kids from athletic practices, athletics, yeah, might be a definitely. <laughs> yeah, for sure. So well, yeah. I remember even when we, we were talking a couple years ago about that road trip that you took out west with like a bunch of teenagers and you're like, yes, their feet. <laughs> yes. Yes. I remember that. Yeah. Good. Perfect timing for like, you know, summer road trips with teens. Well, those are definitely good recommendations. I will feel like we didn't use nearly as much, although I will say that I lived with the Calm app. Oh, um, nice. Because yes. I needed that to for background noise for sleeping. And I also tried, I think we're going to talk about this um, when we get into our interview, but I did just get some AirPod Pros and they're supposed to be like noise canceling. But let me tell you, it's not quite enough to block out my husband's uh, snoring. <laughs> and the other thing is I didn't realize 
how short their time frame was because I used to have like the Bose sleep buds and yeah, they would last yeah. all night. So these like go, they stop, they run out of battery at like after six hours or so. And oh. so I would find myself like waking up and then I would take them out and I would like put them in the, you know, in the charger Charging and like just like kind of like doze a little bit, hold it in my hand for a while. And then when like it always seemed the time of morning when Glenn got really loud. So then I would put him back in you know, <laughs> for like another hour. And oh, so no. I was like, I need to charge these things. But the Calm <laughs> app, at least, you know, like, well, it does do some calming. I actually enjoy it for sleeping, but it, I like the this kind of the sounds that they have. So, yeah, that was really my only thing. Although I definitely need those little tinier, uh, you know, earplug things that go in the ear. Um, yeah. Because these things definitely still hurt as a side sleeper. So, yeah, I, I couldn't handle that because, like you said, I'm a side sleeper. So. Well, I know that Scott has a lot of other recommendations for us. So why don't we jump over and start chatting with him and find out what other tech he has to recommend. So today we're here with Scott Tharler, and he's a gadget expert with over 20 years of experience writing consumer technology columns for Club Life Magazine, Gear Patrol, Maxim, Photos Travel, American Airlines, and others. He's also performed live gadget demonstrations on TV and radio, as well as for public schools and libraries. And this past fall, Scott also launched the Family CTO, which is a new kind of gadget site, which helps you enhance your digital lifestyle with fun and practical gadgets. So welcome, Scott. Hey, thanks for having me here. Yeah, it's nice to talk to a gadget guy because I think, you know, I know Kim has reviewed quite a bit of gear in the past, you know, on her website and I come from a tech background. So I think we both have that in our brains, which is probably why we we started podcasting together too. Yeah, I'm excited. I've always kind of been an early adopter too, which my husband hates because he he never buys the first iteration of something. He always waits a little longer. And I'm sort of getting into his line of thinking, but I still like having the brand new gadget. Well, there's something nice about having something that helps you out when you need it most. And I'm so into travel tech because that's it's the whole reason I got into gadgets. It's when you want something to help you enjoy stuff more or you want to make sure that you're connected and whatever that means to you, tech can help you on your trip. Cool. So before we jump into some specific tech recommendations, can you tell us a little bit about like your family and how did you get into tech as a career? Sure. Well, I'm married with three kids. They are 10, 8, and 4, which is they are interesting ages. I think every age is an interesting age, but those are interesting as we're starting to get to those uh, preteen and teen years. I got into gadgets. I guess I was always into watches. I first started getting into watches probably when I was about my kid's age. I was like eight or 10. And I had a fancy watch that could not only digitally tell you the time, but the seconds and it had an alarm. <laughs> so like that's wow. what passed for fancy <laughs> back then. And from there, that was like my gateway drug to, to gadgets. I had watches that could tell you the temperature that had a calculator that played games that could dial the phone. And it's very funny now because I don't even wear a watch now, but watches were kind of how I got into it because I just love the idea of always having some tech with me. That's cool. I, I was always jealous. I, I was not a Swatch kid. I wanted a Swatch, but my family couldn't afford one. So when you sp speak of watches, I kind of have these flashbacks to my enviousness of people who owned Swatch watches. And I remember playing Snake on a couple of a watch I had at some point. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely some Swatch envy out there. But I, <laughs> I, I, I still look at watches. I'm jealous of my kids because now their watches have like cameras and stuff built in and apps and they're listening to music from them and it's mm -hmm. stuff I, I literally couldn't have even dreamed of back then. So we know that Tamara and I, we love tech and we're definitely into it. And so we're definitely excited about this and helping our listeners learn a little more about maybe some cool travel tech. So outside of your phone, what do you think is the best tech gadget that somebody could bring with them when they're traveling? You know, it's a tough one because there's so many, you know, on some level, I'm I'm almost disappointed if I don't get stopped going through TSA because it's like, <laughs> dude, I have so many things with me. I'm going to say something disappointing. My most favorite gadget is just my brain because I'm always thinking like, OK, what am I going to be doing? How am I going to be using this? 
And so what winds up happening is there's not just one special gadget, but I take a lot of time to pack cords and adapters and accessories to make sure that I have what I need so that if I'm in the car, you know, okay, we're going to be renting a car. So I'm going to want to bring a, a car adapter so I can charge my stuff in the car. Or I want an audio jack so I can make sure that if I want to play something from the TV in this place that we're staying at, that I can play it on this. So it tends to be more functional stuff. And I start packing. My wife will say like, oh, are you packed already? I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I just need to throw some clothes in a bag. Like I I always pack (laughs) my other stuff. It's always electronics first because I really, it's like when you pack, you think, what am I going to be doing? I'm going to be going hiking. So I need comfortable shoes, comfortable socks, and a water bottle and a hat. I do the same thing, but I think I want to make sure that my water bottle has a sensor on it to tell me that I'm drinking enough water. And given that we're going to be hiking, I'll probably want to bring a 360 degree camera so that I can take pictures of everything around me and really get some great panoramic shots. So you're not a minimalist, I think is what you're saying when it comes to uh, to travel uh, gadgets. I tr- I try to be. I'm <laughs> In theory. <laughs> well, when I'm packing, I'm not a minimalist. I have all sorts of redundancy when I'm packing. But when I actually go out... Yeah, I don't want to be schlepping around. You know, if we're at a waterfall in a state park, I want to be enjoying the waterfall. I don't want to be fumbling through my bag looking for just the right stand or just the right camera, just the right anything. I, it's important to know when to put your gadgets down and actually just enjoy where you are. Yeah, I think that's that, a great point. Yeah, And there's only so much you can fit in your bag. I always find like... I finally ended up selling my drone because I found I was always trying to bring like a tripod, my camera the drone, all the cords, you know, your yeah, laptop, the, you know, like everything. Your GoPro like, for the action oh, shots. <laughs> too much stuff. Yeah. But anyway, I thought it would be helpful if we um, kind of break it down into different kinds of travel when we're talking about family travel and see, you know, maybe some of your recommendations for that type of environment, you know, like what will help us in, you know, different types of travel environments. So maybe we can start with road trips since a lot of people are doing those right now. Do you have yeah. any tech gadgets that you would really recommend for people going on a road trip? And I say this, Kim and I are both, you know, have big road trips coming up. So so the first one I mentioned is a car adapter. There are plenty of ones where there are very small ones that can charge to uh, a USB, like a regular, if you have your charging cord with you, and they can do USB-C if you have that kind of a device. So I would look for something small that can charge multiple devices at once. And then also, I think stands are important, things that hold your phone or your tablet in place. Uh, I just got this really interesting one called a Go Donut. And I do not like the name of it, but it is actually, it's like four inches across. I'm actually holding one right now. And it's like the size of a donut. And then it has these slits in there that allow you to put your phone or tablet at different angles. And so you could put this on, say, the armrest and then everybody in the back seat is watching something. So that's cool. There are other ones out there that are more, they would keep it more secure. So if you're bouncing all over the place, you don't have to worry about it going. This is, I mean, it's pretty steady, but uh, there are other things that I bring along that are more like a clamp that clamps onto one end and then it clamps your phone into place. Yeah, Uh, I've seen those that like clamp onto the headrest and then lock in the phone. And I've always felt like those were a little safe you know, a nice, a little bit of a safety in case there was an accident or something. You don't have this projectile flying around. Yeah. You don't, you want, as a rule, you want like the fewest number of things flying around uh, <laughs> yeah. the, the cabin. So there's actually one, there's a company called IOTI and I'll send you a link and we can put it in the show notes, but they have this, it looks sort of like a charging stand, but it's a suction cup t- that goes to an arm and holds your phone in place, and it actually has Alexa built in. And so you have your Amazon smart assistant with you in the phone, in the car, and then you basically just tell in the app, the Alexa app, that you want this to work. So I know that whenever we go someplace, we go to an Airbnb or a hotel or whatever, the kids feel like they're more at home if Alexa is there. And I'm not going to bring the Alexa speaker everywhere we go, but it's nice to know if you're in the car, you can say, hey, Alexa, how far are we from the nearest restaurant or whatever? 
and it's a it's a hands free thing, so you don't have to worry about you know fumbling with your phone or your tablet while you're driving. I wish I had something like that when my daughter was little, and she would just ask so many questions when we were driving, and I was always like why don't you write that down in your notebook and we'll look that up when we get home because <laughs> mommy didn't know the answers. Yeah, there, there are so many ways of, of passing the time. And I think, you know, I think gadgets are one way, but I like the fact that my kids are getting old enough that we can do all sorts of fun word games and math games and, and more of like the kind of things that I would do as a kid to pass the time when I wasn't, you know, we didn't have phones or anything like we didn't even read in the car. It was just sort of playing games. And so there's part of that. But for people who do use their phones and tablets a lot, it's good to have something like WeBoost, which is basically it boosts your cellular. So if you're going to be driving and getting, you know, a change of scenery, you could be going through some parts that you're only getting one or two bars. And so it's good to know that you have connectivity. And so there are things that are It's either a stand that you put your phone in, or it could be something that boosts several devices, like whatever devices are in the car, so that you always have cellular service. And I think that's a good one for people who are thinking about road trips. That's really cool. Yeah, especially as since so many of us rely on our phone GPSs and you have those little moments where it's like can't find you any longer and you're driving along hoping that you're not going to miss a turn. Yeah, yeah suddenly yeah, exactly. it looks like you're driving through outer space or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're off the road. Anything else about road trips? Road trips are interesting because it's not like when you're flying, you think I want to bring the fewest number of things possible and things need to be light. When you're bringing stuff on a road trip, then that's when I would think about bringing a drone instead of, you know, a a different camera. So there are drones that sometimes I'll bring a drone along. It's not like an always thing. But I do think that there's some things that you think like, oh, I'll, I'll just put this in the back. And then if I use it, it's okay. Coolers are a good example, actually. It's funny because they're not really super techie. But I started to write a piece about coolers because I love the the family CTO is all about the lifestyle and like, what are you doing? What problem are you solving? And there are a lot of different coolers. And I didn't know until I did the research that in this article, I'm going over like 10 different kinds of coolers. So for instance, you might have a backpack cooler. If you're going hiking, you might have something where it's more about uh, the kind that you put when you're rolling onto the beach. So you want to make sure it has good wheels that go in the sand Or there might be a different kind that does better for ice retention if you're going out camping. And so it really depends on the kind of trip. And so for all of these gadgets, it's thinking about what are you going to do and how can the technology serve you rather than how do I get 100 gadgets into my car? It's it's really thinking about the the purpose of the gadgets. Yeah, I think you have to think also like quickly about coolers. We have like a little mini fridge for cars that's supposed to be like a cooler, but we've realized it's really a pain in a way because it's really hard to open the door unless you keep a cushion kind of around it. So you can't pack the car as tight as you'd want. Whereas if you have one that opens from the top, you could just open it and grab something out of it. And then when they started inventing the car light, I don't know. It, it, I'm so old. I just know it as a cigarette light adapter, but whatever that's called, and the 120 volt or something mm-hmm. in the back, those worked so well because you could plug those fridges right in the back, but we still have older cars. And so we don't have one of those. But when we've rented cars on a trip, it's been nice to be able to plug directly in back there instead of having a big cord going all the way up to the front. Yeah. And they have some now. There's a company called Go Sun that has essentially the iceless cooler and it's solar powered. So you can not even have to worry about that. You can charge it up beforehand and then use solar to just keep it going if you're, especially if you're out camping and stuff like that and you have some sunshine. That's awesome. Cool. Well, what about for hotel rooms and vacation rentals? You know, Tamara and I have a few of those coming up. So any products that you think, you know, we mentioned the Alexa, but anything else you think maybe makes it feel a little more comfortable tech wise? Yeah. I mean, Tech-wise, the first two things I always think of are basically power and audio or power and entertainment. So for power, I have this thing here called the Eggtronic Power Bar. And you can't see it because we're on a podcast, but it's essentially like it looks like a bar that's about the size of a maybe a thicker version of like a big remote control. 
and then there are three spots on it. And it's essentially a battery that you can wirelessly charge like two phones and a smartwatch on at the same time. And I love that because I don't want to have to start worrying about where am I digging for outlets and I'm not going to bring the same dock that I have by the side of my bed. You know, I don't want to start mm-hmm. worrying about that. And so it's nice and portable and it's a big battery. So it is going to charge like three things and and be good. What's another one? I think for entertainment stuff, you could bring a, a streaming stick. So like a Roku or an Amazon Fire Stick. Those are fun to bring because it's little. And if you're someplace where either they don't have a lot of TV or you get stuck on a rainy day, you can sort of plug in your streaming stick, whatever it is, into the HDMI port of the the back of the TV and then give it power. Uh, You do have to remember to bring your remote. I've done that where I forgot to bring the remote. But if you do that, then essentially it's like you're bringing your entire collection of entertainment. Like you never, never in the old days would you have brought like a DVD player and a remote (laughs) and 300 DVDs. But this, you're just bringing bringing something that's like the size of a, a USB drive and you basically have all your movies. Um, so I like the idea of doing that. It just has to connect to whatever the, the Wi-Fi is. And my and girls, th- actually, we've forgotten remotes before, but they'll use their phones. So I guess at least with the Amazon Fire, it has an app that you can use as a remote on your phone. So Yeah, and that's a great backup. I, I've actually had to do that with the Roku before. So mm-hmm. as, long as, yeah. as long as your phone is on the same Wi-Fi network as the streaming stick, then that's a great workaround. It's funny, my daughter just asked me the other day, I think the Grammys are going to be on on a certain night or some award show that she wanted to watch while we were traveling. And she's like, do you think the hotel will have CBS? And I'm like, (laughs) they're so used to like only doing streaming kind of stuff, but they don't even know like what regular TV is. Yeah, Yeah, my kids are growing up in a very interesting world where like if they can't listen to the exact song that they want or watch the exact movie that they want right then, then... They're just befuddled. Like, why can't we? Because in the olden days, we had to wait for things. Like, we had to wait for a commercial. And then when The Wizard of Oz comes on once a year, you see it. You don't just say, like, you know, play Wizard of Oz, and then it just shows up. Yeah. We actually just had that last night where we were going to watch a movie and you know, they were ready to just rent it for three bucks. And I was like, well, let me just check and see if it's on anything because we have all these services. And then we also pay for Comcast. And sure enough, it was free on Comcast through like FX channel or whatever. And they were like, oh, but it has ads and commercials, mom. And I'm like, too bad. <laughs> we're going to yeah. we're gonna take advantage of this like free streaming and not pay three bucks for it. But they're just so like, they're just expect that they can just get it. And it's kind of funny. And we also happen to pay for uh, Spotify, even though we already pay for YouTube music because they like Spotify and all their friends are on Spotify. And so I don't know, this tech tech world is, when you have teenagers, it becomes a another level. Yeah. I mean, you were talking about swatches. I remember there was a thing when I was in junior high school of that people would have these jackets that could pack into themselves and it was just like fold up jacket (laughs) and everybody had it and so you know that's one thing if you're buying like a 30 dollar jacket but then there's like headphones and laptops and phones and there's so much stuff that teenagers are going to want to have that that seems overwhelming to me so that's sort of what i'm bracing for so you mentioned if you go to a, a vacation house or a rental or something like that one of the things you might not be used to are the sounds that are going on And so I like to bring, they're either passive or active noise-canceling earbuds. And by passive, I mean it literally is just an earplug. Um, And there's a particular brand called Loop that I like. And then for active, that's more of what you're used to for noise-canceling. But these are tiny, there's a a company out of Finland called Quiet On. And they're so small that they fit into your ears and you can actually sleep with them on. And they will last the whole night. And it makes a big difference. It it has canceled out snoring and other environmental sounds that I just didn't want to hear that helped me sleep better on vacation. Because you want to be you want to be actually awake to enjoy your vacation. So it's nice to to be fully rested. I'm gonna have to look those up because I I think I've talked about on the podcast before. I used to use the Bose sleep buds. And then the battery stopped working and then the company recalled them actually because they couldn't get the battery to work and actually refunded me even though it was 
I had had the product for a year and I've been wanting them to come out with a new one. I think they did just come out with a new one, but then I also just recently finally gave in and got the Apple AirPods that are noise canceling. So they're not as small, so obviously not as comfortable, but they at least are multi-purpose. But those sound those sound great because that is always my issue is uh, snoring and definitely any hall noise when you're in a hotel. Like I can't stand when people walk by like late at night making lots of noise or you're near the elevator or the ice machine, you know, something like that. Yeah. Or people that don't realize that like after 10 p.m., maybe just don't stand in the hallway talking. Talking. But <laughs> yeah. There are actually other people who are families who might want to get to sleep. I always feel like such an old person saying that, but, you know, we just paid to come down here, stay at a Disney resort, and we're going to be going before the park opens. So maybe get back into your room and have that conversation. (laughs) That's why I hate when you either know that there's a wedding there because, you know, there's going to be the drunk people coming back late or when there's some kind of sports like sports team tournament. (laughs) Because those kids are going to be like running up and down the hallways. Yeah. 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 So we talked about kind of in the hotel room or vacation rental we talked about in the car. I know it's been a long time since we've flown. We're probably a lot of us, maybe not everybody. But, you know, what are some things that you would recommend uh, to use on the flight to make it more comfortable or more enjoyable? Well, you know, I said that I, I'm very much into the adapters and the cables and everything, but I don't want to be reaching into my bag into like a rat's nest of stuff to try to get at whatever I'm getting at. So I like having an organizer that's just for cables and little accessories like that. There's a great company, you probably know about them, called Nomadic. And it's mm-hmm. the, the mm-hmm. last part of it is spelled like automatic. Uh, so Nomadic has great suitcases and bags. And I just discovered that they have some other sort of everyday carries like a wallet, a very minimalist wallet that just carries your cash and cards in with as little material as you can imagine. And then they have this thing that they just call their travel organizer that's exactly for what I just said. So it carries spare batteries and earbuds and memory cards and all your wires and things so that when you you know that you want to take something from that out, you can just pull out one thing, open it up, and there you have it. So I like that. You know, the old thing used to be, like you had said, bows, like everybody, you would walk down the aisle and you could just see like 20 different people wearing Bose headphones and those are great, but it's not its not the first thing I think of. I think of, like, are my kids going to be set? And I'm not necessarily going to get them $300 headphones. <laughs> so I like the idea of getting them their own headphones. There's a company called Puro that makes great kids' headphones that are actually stylish and they are volume limiting. So they can't crank it up over 85 decibels, which can cause uh, hearing damage. So I love Puro headphones for that. And then the most important little accessory you can have sometimes, especially if you have two kids, is a splitter. But they actually make them now. There's a company called 12 South that makes something called the Airfly Pro. And it's basically a Bluetooth adapter. And so it works both ways. So way number one is that if you plug this into the armrest or sometimes they have like a an audio jack in the back of the headrest, you plug this in and then you can have two different sets of Bluetooth earphones listening to that same audio, whatever that is. So that's a great thing to stop fights for 90 minutes. But it actually that's works. That's so important because I can't tell you how many times I've seen people bring Bluetooth headphones on a flight without their, you know, the cord that all the Bluetooths come with, but they forget the cord because they're just used to using Bluetooth. And then they have the seat back entertainment for like a long international flight and they can't do anything yeah. with it. There's, so they have to ask for one of the pay $5 for the cheap, you know, dollar store earbuds from the I've airline. That. <laughs> I still have yeah. like a JetBlue set right in my little travel kit because <laughs> for Hannah, I've had to do that a few times. Yeah. yeah, it's it's awful. And these actually, this 12 South product I just mentioned Uh, There's another kind of Bluetooth adapter, which is it can take wired headphones and make them Bluetooth. So it works the other way. So if you have your favorite wired headphones or earbuds or whatever, you can plug those into this and then uh, it can be Bluetooth to whatever, you know, your phone or whatever is the source of playing the music. Cool. And I'll give one shout out of something that happened to me is, you know, wireless earbuds are so popular and like AirPods, they actually have like little and this is not techie, but I don't know what you would call them. It reminds me of like glasses holders like that you would 
keep on a pair of glasses to be able to hang there. But I had an earbud in and I was kind of falling asleep and it popped out of my ear. And then I'm like looking all over the floor for this earbud that just fell down. And, you know, it's not a good, you don't want to be digging around for an earbud on the floor of an airplane. (laughs) So just a heads up that if you are using earbuds, it might, you know, see if you can look into any that have a some kind of like if especially it works with the airpods i know where you can keep them together so if one pops out you don't it's attached to the other one still i feel like that's why they make the announcement now like if you lose something (laughs) you know like call your flight attendant or something yeah yeah i i don't want to be digging around on the floor for anything so (laughs) exactly that's i don't know everybody has their own thing with germs in most places like around my house if something falls on the floor i will pick it up and eat it that's fine. But there's certain floors where I just go like, I, I don't even like walking around hotel room floors like without socks on. So yeah. I don't know. <laughs> I hear you there. Well, why don't we move on and just quickly chat about photography? Because a huge part of travel is taking photos. So I know this can go down a huge, you know, it could be an episode on its own, but just, you know, kind of top level. Do you have any favorite gear that you like to bring on family vacations for photography? Yeah, definitely. There are a bunch of different factors. Uh, I won't go into drones because we talked about that. I think one thing is most people don't even think about bringing a traditional camera, you know, like the old school camera. And so if you're going to be using your smartphone, then there are a couple of things that you can do to make it even better. There's a, a company called Pictar that has something called the their Pro Grip that it does a few things. First of all, it looks like sort of half of a camera. And so it, it looks and feels like you're holding a camera. So it's not, you don't have to do that weird thing where you're like scissoring your, your pinky and your pointer to try to hold your camera when you're taking pictures. Um, but it actually will charge your phone while it's in there. And it has some actual real life buttons on there. So you can do things like bring up a different mode or zoom in. Or actually take the picture by clicking a button, which is nice because then you don't have to like look away and fumble and touch your screen. So having something like that is fun. Another thing, if you're going to be using your phone, is a gimbal. Have you guys ever used a, a gimbal when shooting photo yeah, or videos? Yeah, yeah we've, yep. <laughs> yeah. Both of us have owned the Osmo. Osmo. Well, yeah, the Osmo Pockets, but, or, yeah. and then the Osmo Mobile too. So. Yeah, so like that's the the DJI product. A lot of these drone companies realize they're making things that allow the drone to, to be steady and take great pictures. Hey, why don't we make everybody's picture steady? So I would recommend having a gimbal with you. I think that's Anoth- good for video mainly. Like if you're shooting video is what I've noticed on that. So yeah, it's kind of my there's, go-to for that. There's sort of something nostalgic. Like when you picture, don't if you picture like your parents or your grandparents, like, oh, remember those pictures we took from Bermuda in the 50s? You picture it being kind of shaky. So there's something nice about it. But if you plan on watching something for more than like two minutes, like you really don't want shaky video. So it's nice to just get rid of that. Another thing that's good to have is if you're going to be taking a lot of pictures and videos, that's going to take up a lot of memory. And so it's good to have a backup of memory. And so Western Digital makes a product that's basically like a wireless drive. It's about, let's see, I have it here. It's like about six inches by six inches and maybe an inch thick. And you can take, if you do have a a camera that you're shooting off of, you can take the memory card from that, put it in, and it will automatically back up your pictures. And it's a wireless drive, meaning that you can then, everybody on their own phones, can load up the app and see whatever pictures or video you shot from that. So you could actually have a bunch of videos that are just on there. And then if you're waiting at the airport, you could be, everybody could be looking at pictures and watching them and and talking about them on their phones and stuff. So I like having a way of backing up stuff so that I don't lose pictures that I've taken. I guess another one would be, there's a company called Insta360. And I actually just talked about this product called the go on my podcast and it's like the size of your pinky and they just came out with the go Two just this week and it's so small that i read somewhere that it it weighs the same as six pieces of paper like it's super duper small and this is the kind of thing that you could wear and you can program it to just take pictures like every 
30 seconds or every whatever. And so it's a great action cam because it actually does some, it uses some software to do some stabilization optically. And then um, it's just also good because there are a lot of fun effects. You can do slow motion, you can do time lapse. So like if you want to see, you know, it's kind of pretty to see a time lapse picture of like the clouds going by along the beach in Hawaii or seeing a sunset or just seeing the rush of people in a city. So there are a lot of different fun effects that you can do and they make it really easy to edit stuff. And so it's a great little camera, but really the secret sauce is the the editing. It's so easy to make really fun effects. And it's just a new way instead of like, you know, in the old days, you take a picture, you print it out, you look at it. Like that's all there is to do with it. This There's so many different ways of, of sort of making your memories into a, a more of a multimedia experience. So I like their stuff. So what does that look like? I'm just trying to like picture how small it is. Is it, you said it like clips on? Yeah. So they have different mounts and clips. The one that I have, the original one is it has a magnetic back. So Mm. you would put like the magnetic back, one little piece of it under your shirt. And then this on your shirt, uh, on their website, they show people literally like it's on a sweatband or on a hat. You can clip it on there. So it's more of like your eyes, your perspective. But it is tiny. And so there is sort of a conundrum with with having tiny tech. Like you just said, the last thing you want is to have a, you know, a couple hundred dollar action cam falling on the floor of your airplane and then you don't know where it is mm-hmm. or that you lose it in your Airbnb or wherever you are. So they have some some really good accessories that help you mount it to different places because they want you to be mounting it onto your bike or your car or your whatever so that you can take some interesting shots. Kim, all I can think about is how many, how much photo editing you're doing to like straighten the horizon. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And this, this does I some really it cool stuff. Do it. Yeah. This, and it sounds this, like it'll like stitch them together. And so, hmm, yeah, nice it'll stuff. stitch it together. And then it's all this artificial intelligence stuff that I was like, just wondering if it had AI. Yeah. Yeah. So there's this AI stuff that you basically upload this stuff and it says, okay, I will tell you what your best shots were, or I will put together a montage of like all the coolest video that you did so that's that's what makes it really cool i think yeah that does otherwise it sounds a little bit overwhelming i'm just thinking back to um back in the day when we would all come back from a trip and make like a photo book you know and like (laughs) how many of those photo books did we actually do and you know like kind of i know i gave up on them in about 2015 or something like that Mm -hmm. but so that's we've certainly covered a lot so far i'm just curious we've talked a lot about hardware but do you have any favorite travel apps that you like to use when you're planning you know i'm so boring when it comes to that i really just use kayak to to look at what the best flights are because i just love the granularity of being able to say you know i want under this price range with no red eyes going through these airports but for these dates i tend to book hotels on priceline And because I do, I've become like a VIP gold. And so I just like the express deals. And if I, what I like about Priceline is that you can get a good rate, but it, it really rewards flexibility, which most travel does. Like, and so if you don't have to stay in an exact place at an exact time, you just know, I want to be somewhere near Charlottesville because we're going to go on this skyline drive. And so you know, within 20 miles, you can find something that is a a good deal. So I like those. You know, there are actually some apps that I've used. You were talking about road trips. There's one called Inrix that is a, it's basically a traffic monitoring. And I know other people use Waze or just Google Maps. It's sort of built in. But Inrix, I found, if you say, I'm going from here to here, it's the most accurate of doing real-time updates to say, actually, Based on traffic, we think it would be best if you went this way. And then it has another interesting thing where you can slide the timeline. So it would say like, okay, it's 3.30, but what if we left at 4? And it will use whatever fancy AI is out there thinking of what's going to happen with the traffic to say, you know, if you go at 3.30, it's going to take you an hour. But if you go at 4, it's only going to take you 35 minutes. So I kind of like that. Other than that, I think there's there are actually some interesting things that are more like programs that I've found. My daughter is currently in the fourth grade, and apparently that's a magical age because there's a program that the government has called Every Kid Outdoors where 
they get like a free pass to every state park or every national park, national every park, national yeah. park. Yeah. And so and they actually expanded it to fifth graders this year as well because of the shutdown last year. Yeah. And that's great. And there was another thing here. I happen to be in, in New York and they have there's a program called I Ski New York where fourth graders can ski for free. So it's a golden time to be nine or 10 years old. <laughs> like there's all sorts of fun things. But I think it's just a matter of sort of looking out there and seeing what cool programs happen to be out there. The The only thing that I don't know if you've heard of, there's a site out there called Sky Hour. Have you heard of that one? Mm-mm. Sky Hour is an interesting one. I know you I can you imagine just, what it does, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, it's like you when you recently had on, I think her name was Danielle from the, the Thought Card. She was talking about saving up for trips. It's actually something to help you save up for trips, but it's something where people can help out. And the basis of it is that you pay for hours of flight. You're not paying for distance. You're not paying for, like, this is how much it is. You literally, will, I think it's something like, you know, it's $60 for an hour of flight. And so you can start to do the math and realize, like, if you're going to Florida or California, that might not make sense. But actually going to Europe, that's not that crazy. Like, it's not that crazy that you would pay for, you know, five or six hours to certain places in Europe. And so if I know you're going on a trip, I could say, hey, Kim, I'm going to donate an hour to your trip. And then either other people add more hours to that or you just pay whatever the difference is. But it's basically good on any airlines. You're just paying for something that then gets, instead of transferring points into a flight, it's if you have the right number of hours, that turns into a flight. So I just thought that was an interesting spin on things I hadn't seen before. That's really cool. Yeah, I was thinking it was going to be, I know there's websites that'll show you like the sunrise and sunset times for specific locations so that you can do it. So I was thinking when you said Sky Hour, that was what I was imagining it was. But that sounds way cooler. And I think that would be a really good, I was thinking Tamara, like graduation trips type thing where, you know, you can say, hey, donate an hour of flight time or something. That's pretty cool. Yeah, but it's also that factor, um, like you're saying with your other guests, where you get to see it building up. So you get to see, oh, cool, I have this much towards my trip. And it's not just a, like, maybe I'll get to go on the trip or maybe I won't. Right, right. You know, that's really neat. It makes me think of like when people get married and they register where you can kind of donate towards their honeymoon or something like that. It'd be another neat way to use it. Yeah, exactly. Well, we've certainly have talked about a lot of things, but we have a question for you uh, that we ask all of our guests. And I imagine that yours is still going to have some kind of tech angle to it since you talked about water bottles of sensors and all these kind of things. But do you have any favorite brand of clothing or you know, what do you wear when you travel? I definitely do. And I think the first one is called Scotty Vest. And I am, yeah. I am not the Scott <laughs> in Scotty Vest. It's actually a, a friend of mine, Scott Jordan, that I've known for 20 years. And I love his stuff because it started off as just being literally like a fishing vest with a bunch of pockets in it, but it's grown to be shirts. I'm actually wearing a what they call their camping shirt now. So it's like a nice short sleeve button down shirt. They have pants and shorts and dresses. Uh, they even have a mask nowadays. But all of their stuff is based on not just having a lot of pockets, but bringing your tech with you. And I know when I'm going on a business trip, if I have the the blazer, they have like a sport jacket with a lot of stuff, it literally saves me like a carry-on's worth of stuff that I can put in there. And so I have cords and batteries and a lot of the stuff that I talked about, I will have in specific pockets in that. So I'm a big fan of Scotty Vest. Um, well, you can tell your friend, Scott, that I also own two of the long cardigans that they have for women with those big, deep pockets. Cool. Yeah, I mean, they they really have expanded. They have, I guess they never got into shoes, but they have underwear. There's all sorts of stuff. Like if you want to, for some reason, if you want to be walking around your hotel room in your underwear, but you also want your phone with you, then they've got you covered. I'm just, yeah, I'm not really picturing the, the pocket <laughs> usage. But, yeah. Okay. There's, there's all sorts of fun ways that could go. But but basically, I I always have something I always have like one or two things with me that are like, it's usually like a polo shirt and a t-shirt or a, you know, like a camping shirt and a t-shirt that have these pockets built in. And it's just, it's nice. And it's also, I think people nowadays are more accepting of the fact that you're going to have tech with you, but you still don't want to look like you're schlepping around a bunch of stuff. So it's good at like hiding the tech that you have. 
Definitely, I agree. Yeah. Um, the other one that I tend to bring with me, it's an Italian shoe company called ACBC, and it stands for Anything Can Be Changed. And basically, these are these, you might have heard of these, they're like zip-up shoes. And what I mean by that is that you bring along like one pair of soles, and then you zip the tops off, like, and right here, I'm actually holding them in my hand. And so if you're hiking during the day, and you're walking around another part of the day, and then at night, you're going to be going to some nicer event or just going out to a nice dinner, then you could basically have just three sets of the tops that you zip on to the bottom, and it takes up way less space, you know? Like when I go to the annual Consumer Electronics Show, I could have five pairs of shoes, but it takes up not that much more than just one or two pairs of shoes in my bag. That's really neat. I'll have to look into those because I've not heard of it. I, I'm familiar with like the women's flip-flop brand that has mm-hmm. where you switch out like the top, you know, the thong part, but interesting. Oh, it's funny you mentioned that actually because there's a new company that I just, I know you guys are fans of Ufus, but there's one that I just found out that's a, they're based out of Israel and it's called Link and they have what they call flip shoes and they're like flip-flops except for they don't have the top part. So it's like the bottom part only. And so the bottom part goes like around your foot and hugs your foot. And then you don't, your front two toes don't have to grip onto the thong for dear life that like you're going <laughs> to, you know, walk out of your shoes. So those look really cool. I haven't tried them yet, but they look really amazing. Sounds nice. very like modernistic space agey. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, Scott, why don't you tell our listeners where they can find you online? Because I know, you know, a lot of this tech they're going to want to kind of see and you probably have a lot of reviews and pictures. So where can they find you? So the company is called The Family CTO. And of course, we have channels on Twitter and Instagram and Facebook. There's a podcast you can look up wherever you listen to podcasts. You can look up The Family CTO. But really, the website is the the great launching pad. So if you just go to thefamilycto.com, then there are links to all of that stuff. Perfect. Well, we will link to all of that in our show notes, as well as a lot of the products that you mentioned today. And so I know I'm going to be Googling a lot lot of things after this interview and looking things up. So I hope that our listeners found it very helpful. And I really appreciate you coming on and sharing all your knowledge. You have gone much deeper than either Kim and I, I think I've ever done into a dive into this, you know, family travel tech Oh, it's my pleasure. I love talking about it. And thanks for having me on the show. So we're back and I just wanted to give a shout out to one of our listeners, Lee. He wrote in because he was listening to the episode that we did with Nate from Room Steals about tips for finding hotel deals. And I know that Nate was asking us recommendations for comfortable men's shoes and we didn't really have a lot to tell him. So anyway, Lee recommends Cole Haan. He really loves those. And he said that their soles were actually made by Nike, which I did not realize. So that explains why they're a little more comfortable. So guys that we've been ignoring, sorry about that. And we have some more recommendations recommendations for you. So thanks, Lee, for giving us an email and, and giving us your tip. Yeah, that's a good tip. I actually, you know, my husband has a pair of Cole Haan working shoes that, you know, are kind of like loafer styles. So I should have thought of that. But anyways, well, we appreciate you guys joining us and you will want to tune in again in two weeks because we are going to be talking about a really popular destination that a lot of people are thinking about. And that is the Grand Circle Road Trip through the Big Five of Utah and the Grand Canyon. So join us then. 